everybody. Welcome back to the American Dota League. It is the last series of the night. It's Radiant Top 5 versus team. Isurus Gaming HyperX. Of course, two pretty interesting teams. Top 5 actually replacing the now defunct, or at least now not in the ADL, THG. The house is down, so they're going to jump in. A very strong North American team that have played in a lot of different tournaments. Ten really excited what they remaining. can bring to the table here, obviously. It's just going to be a great series all around. We'll see if they can come out on top or if it's tied 1-1 or what have you. But... Of course, before we get into all of that, my name is Maud. With me tonight is the ever so sexy Coddle Guy. How are you doing, sir? I love it. I just, you get to that point, Maud, every time when you introduce me and you pause for a moment. I'm like, here it goes. What is it going to be? Just, what like, is yeah. the magic adjective going to be this time? Sexy, Radiant illustrious. You know, I'm just, I'm ready for whatever you send my way. I, and I, need, I, will, I need a source, man. I honestly, I need I'll a take source. super sexy, though, Maud. It's okay. So I'm happy to be back. It's going to be great. You know, new series at hand. And, you know, I'm sorry to see the house is down go, but. We do all get to inherit a new squad, top five. I got to cast them a couple of times. They're a nice talent. They've worked together a lot. They've done a lot of things. They've done Sevo, I believe, and some, you know, various work in other, you know, lower tier leagues and tournaments. So they definitely have a lot of experience working with them. And uh, I I don't know. I would have to favor them in this particular matchup on paper. I haven't gotten to see too much from Asura's Gaming since, like, back when Helios was happening. And they right. definitely showed a lot of dominance there. And But ever since then, I've got, I haven't gotten to see them play in one of their usual Radiant spicy lineups. Pick. Yeah, Asurus actually, they had a bit of a rough start. I believe they're the one of the only teams that are 0-2 as it stands right now. If I look at the AmericanDotaLeague.com standings, where you can find all of the standings there. Yeah, in fact, Dial they are the only team 0-2. And, and guess who that came at the hands of? Of course, Sneaky Enix Assassin, who we just saw. So Asurus mm. Gaming looking to get back to winning right now. And it's going to be up against a tough team. team. Pick. They'll pick the Invoker first, but that, that dual support coming out for top five with the Ancient Apparition, with the Sand King as well. Got to combine it up for the end of their first picking stage. Yeah, this is great. You know, no surprises as far as bands. And then if an Invoker's still in the pool, why not grab it for yourself? So Suros jump on that opportunity. And then top five actually get to grab up a bit of foundation for themselves. The Ancient Apparition and the Sand King. And I know Raya Boris himself has talked a bit about how much he loves the Sand King. Raya Boris... Tell me, in about three words, how great is Sand King? Thank you very much, Ray Boris. Always a pleasure to have you casting with us. Now, Surus Gaming grab up the Centaur Warrunner for their offlane. Fantastic big meaty man who was uh, able to take a lot of punishment there and hold strong, but still be able to be close enough to inherit a little bit of extra gold as well as a little bit of XP. Yeah, Centaur Warrunner, strong pickup, I mean... It's no surprise that he's picked now. I mean, and we talked about it last game. You get to a point where certain heroes are just kind of the norm, and, and Centaur Warrunner is one of them, and the amount of fight that he can bring early on in the game, he's pretty tanky, like you, I think, probably mentioned in, in that offlane, obviously. And, uh, you know, he'll be okay, I think, with, I don't know, though, Ancient Apparition, Chilling Touch, and the Sand King, Bro Strike. But the thing is, Sand King's not going to be in lane that all that often. I mean, he'll maybe try to leech a level or two, and that might come from a gank, so we'll see. I'm surprised top five go for the SK, and... Maybe they kind of think that this is a hero that's starting to get into the meta. And I also agree to a certain extent that it's got its place. And mm -hmm. if if you're greedy enough to go for the SK and hope that your jungle doesn't get warded, you're going to be in a position where you can certainly get some farm into a blink dagger at about 10 to 12 minutes. Five yeah, and as Ryu was talking about, about him, just look to play very aggressive in the mid lane. And it's okay. Yeah, I do understand Ryu Boris talk, so... But as we move on to further into the banning phase here, top five, they're going to need a little bit more damage under the belts, a little bit more of a core. You know, if they want to go with their support duo they already got here in the Sand King and the Ancient Apparition, they still got an off lane to deal with. Now, there is still the prominent Nyx Assassin in the pool available. I know they did ban out the Batrider and uh, Asura's grabbed the Centaur for themselves, but I would have to think that maybe, you know, the Nyx Assassin would work pretty nicely here. Yeah, I'd agree. I think Nyx works in just a lot of lineups. Nyx oh, yeah. Assassin, he's just so solid, and we saw that last game from Fluff and stuff as well. I mean, like, it just does so much work. Like, if you get a chance Radiant to Vendetta and they're not ready that. for it, and all of a sudden you're in a lane with somebody, that person may very well die. And it, also, it, it doesn't even have to come down to the Impale. I mean, you can do it if in damage with the Vendetta, Spike, and, of course, the Mana Burn to, to get a couple mm -hmm. of kills. So, the hero is strong. It's been strong for a couple of months now, even maybe a year Ten or so, I think. And, remaining. well... If they want to go down that road, they certainly can. But as it stands Five now, the band's continuing onward here with the Visage ban, the Storm Spirit ban, and with the Surus having the Invoker and the Centaur right now, you've got to maybe pick up some supports, which are, and to be fair, there are a lot of them available, like a lot of good ones. Dazzle, I haven't seen him tonight, which is actually kind of a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. The Surus Gaming, though, they're thinking about 
maybe that top five is looking to have a prominent mid lane pickup here, and they ban out both the Storm Spirit as yeah. well as the hard hitting uh, Templar Assassin. So this does limit their options a little bit here, and it could definitely. I I'm just eager to see his third pick because there's not a lot of information given with these first two pickups. I mean, one on the hand is going to look to try to soak up lots of XP and gold for himself so he could be a pain in the ass with the Ice Blast, and Sand King can play more aggressive or just kind of hold strong in the uh, jungle and build up farm there, but nothing really given away. We don't know if this is going to be a push heavy strat. We don't know if this is going to be like a pure mid game. It could still be a wombo combo. Right. Like, there's not enough information there, Mod. I'm waiting. I want to know. This third pickup will probably tell the tale. I think because they go for the same thing this early, they're kind of maybe thinking about going for something time. like a bit of a pocket strategy. DK, not one of those heroes that I'd say is in that Radiant pocket strategy. Team. He's certainly good, but he's good at creating space, I think, for the most part. Just kind of sitting in mid and making sure that if they give him room to try to take down that tier 1 tower, he will. And then that means that rotations are going to have to come mm -hmm. and defend that tier 1 mid, which gives room for the Sand King to farm the jungle, which gives room for the Ancient Apparition to help out support whatever lane he's in. So DK is a smart pickup here against the Invoker. It's okay. It's pretty strong breathe fire mm -hmm. obviously you've got the regen from quas which should be okay Ten level seconds. six is going to be the point where dk might try to man up and go for a kill in the invoker depending on Five whether or not he's quas wicks or quas exhort he can actually grab it as well so mm -hmm. um yeah i feel okay about the lineup i feel okay about the damage coming out from the breathe fire and the epi and what have you but uh still like you said you, you need more information for top five yeah, I mean, this does help. Now, if they decide to kind of go more full throttle with the pushing, with the help of that dragon form, they can get something like maybe a Nature's Prophet for the offlane if they want to, you know, enhance that power even further. Or if they kind of want to take advantage of all the lockdown they're already working with here. You got Cold Feet plus the Burrow Strike and now a Dragon Tail. So a lot of nice, secure lockdown on their side. Right. Asurus Gaming, when they decide to build into a core, maybe someone who could, you know, have more durability. I like the ban that Top 5 did. They Dial knew team. that the Lifesteal would be a nice prominent pick up there because with the help of the Rage and then all that extra defense, he wouldn't have to worry too much about all that lockdown. So yeah, yeah. instead, Asurus Gaming, grab up the Shadow Demon. Moran is still available. Can't help but think that that's just kind of a match made in heaven. Yeah, I, I'd say when you think about a Shadow Demon coming out this early on, you probably think about, well, one of two things. You can go for the Dazzle with the Heal Bomb, or you can go for the Marana like you talked about. And I, I'd say either or at this point, because they still mm -hmm. need Ten that extra support, remaining. but they also need their safe lane. So their draft is kind of open-ended, which means that Asurus five have a lot going for them remaining. in terms of kind of the advantage of the draft. Whereas top five, they got the mids banned out. They already picked it up, though, and now they kind of have free reign over their off, as well as safe lane heroes, or I guess hero in the tri lane, or farming here whatever you want to call it the carry if you will with one minute left to reserve time right now and i wouldn't mind seeing something that can keep everybody close together for that epicenter for the breathe fire perhaps something like a, a faces void but we don't see him too often they're going to go for a morphling instead and that actually is a lot of burst damage coming through i mean with waveform with adaptive strike not to mention he's very difficult to gank as well so strong pickup coming out for top five yeah, you know, one of those heroes that if he gets to that point in his full potential, he's de it definitely gets out of hand real quick. So now it comes down to if Asurus Gaming can kind of address the Morphling sooner than later and not allow him to get there because Morphling's still going to need to try to get up that Lincoln Sphere and then go on from there if he decides to go with the shotgun, the Manta, what have you. So it's going to be very crucial to them to try to make sure they contain this Morphling and not allow him to just burst out and go crazy like a Naga or like a Ember or whatever what have you and look at that mod nice call right there dazzle gonna be the pickup a bit of a heal bomb there nice pick nice, and nice. The, the crazy thing about that is they can still go for marana unless top five ban it and and that actually gives them a very strong lineup very solid mid game lineup and and one thing I do want to talk about is, is yes, you have escapability on the Morphling, but a lot of that comes down to mana and having enough to, you know, strength morph and even just waveform away. If you get EMP'd, which is a very real possibility, all of a sudden your fight suddenly goes mm, probably poorly. So there is that opportunity for the Invoker if he goes for Quaswex and... I don't know. I mean, as it stands now, I think I prefer top five just because they have that tankiness. And it really comes down to the offlane because anytime you can get an AA and the Chilling Touch, you, you do the damage and, and they'll be okay. But really, the offlane, like I talked about in the first game tonight, you, the offlane dictates play. Stampede is going to be a big factor. Blink Stomps are going to be a big factor. What is going to be the hero for top five? Is it going to be somebody that is, you know, kind of aggressive like a Centaur or somebody that just is going to leech levels and experience? Actually, I want to hand this one over to Ryo Boris. Ryo Boris, just tell me right now, flat out, who do you think the fifth pickup will be for top five? Right here. Let's go. Dig deep. All right, so what are their four heroes right now? It's oh, AA, God, Sand King, Ryo DK, Boris, and Morph. Please. Not even Dude, watching the I game. can't see. I'm, I'm two minutes behind AA, you. AA, Sand down. King, right, DK, right. Morph. 
All right, so it's going to be an offlane, and it's going to be, uh, let's see, Nyx. Nyx, or... thank you very much, Rice. Right, so I like Thank it. you so much. Good. Okay, well, Nyx, huh? That's I guess that's pretty an interesting nice pickup. We talked about it a bit earlier in the draft, and they're not even considering it because they oh, used their bands in the meantime on the uh, mid lane. So mm -hmm. they still have one last band here to work with, so hopefully they figure it out and try to go so for that. Tough. Clockwork also is still in the pool. They're thinking of Timbersaw because maybe yeah, they have centaur. a lot of meat with the Centaur. Yeah. And we've seen it work definitely in Timbersaw's favor. I think that was like the other night we watched a game with Timbersaw. Yes, yeah, ago, went yep. insane with him, just obliterated. So, you know, respectable band there, but there's Still some solid options here. Do they go for the Nyx Assassin? Do they go for the Clockwork? We'll see here in just about a moment's notice. <laughs> yeah. The Darkseer. And, oh, oh, man, you know, wow. I saw something like this draft the other day. It was Liquid versus Dog Ryu. You were actually there casting that game. And, and actually, it was the Sand King and the Darkseer for, you know, a Demon and Bulba kind of just mm -hmm. trying to contest the, well, first of all, the offlane for the Darkseer, and then they actually kind of had to just head to the jungle because Darkseer got zoned out so hard. Bulba fed first blood, I believe. So eh, it's not greedy, but at the same time, Darkseer needs levels, and a lot of that can come through fighting, which should happen early Ten on. But um, more often than not, this hero, I feel like, falls flat. Five but when he's on, he's remaining. certainly on, and he could, he could do some work with the vacuum, with the wall, and the Iron Shell, especially against these squishier heroes like There's a Dazzle. A Shadow Demon and even an Invoker. The one thing that does raise a little bit of a flag for me, though, is it's a pretty greedy team here, Mott. Every single one of them need a certain amount of farm for themselves. Right. I mean, you're going to have Sand King looking to the jungle. He wants to get that blank. Ancient Apparition, he wants to get that Agnum Scepter. Obviously, Dragon Knight, he's going to work into the BKB and then damage. And, of course, Morphling, we already talked about. And now even a Dark Seer. He needs his own set of initiation. Maybe he needs to get that mechanism quick. They need farm. Oh, yes. baby! Gaming, go right back and grab the Meepo. I was too nervous to talk about this time because last time I hyped it up and they didn't do it, and now they do, baby. Fall, full back on the Meepo. I'm excited. Okay, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a game for you Be here. Careful, oh man, home. yeah, you're absolutely right. You talked about it last time, and you were like, yeah, the, you were. I, I remember you hyping up the Meepo so much, and I'm just like, really? You're gonna pick yeah, a Meepo? Everyone is picking a Meepo, yeah, whatever. But they pulled it out. <laughs> Helios, man, and it, me and Mason, not not the Mason, but Mason, White Elven Hills Mason, we watched the game, and it was a performance, so I don't mean to overhype it right now in case things go very bad for him, but this guy can play Amiibo. Yeah, and, and actually, they're laying it pretty well as well, and they, they need to give experience to him quick just to make sure he gets that level three to get that clone in, and if you snowball on Amiibo, it's very difficult to stop. If you get a blink dagger and bots and like even an agathems, you like you throw up like an earth or you don't even need to. You just blink it and poof on people and they die instantaneously. So we'll we'll wait and see for it's sewers right now. Their roster gonna get some introductions in. Fullback on that Meepo down to the bottom solo safe lane mid. DDX gonna be on the invoker. He's got a ring of basilius to start things off with, but no extra damage items. Top aggressive tri lane coming out right now with Dazzle played by Pepita and a Hydra on the Shadow Demon and 999. He'll be on that Centaur War Runner. And for your new top five making their debut now in the ADL, subbing in after the house is down, has stepped out. It will be Shanks on that Scanned King. He's in the top rune area, but he's got to be careful, actually, because uh, to the north, we got a gang of three right here of a sewers gaming. Oh, greedy for the... Oh, not in range. Oh. Can't quite get it. Nope. No disruption for you, sir. Takes the DD for himself and will step back and join his comrade, whatever playing the Ancient Apparition. And along the top, you see Pat Soul playing carry once again for Asurus on the Morphling. Mid is going to be Fly on your Dragon Knight. And finally, on your bottom lane, it is, sorry, cutting the lane. Actually threw me off here. Look at this. Darkseer going full ham right now. Respect my authority as he takes a hold of the lane. Yeah, a little bit of carbon action coming out from the darks here right now. And it's a, it's an off lane for him up against the solo safe lane. This is going to be kind of difficult for the Meepo. He's going to have to last it under the tower and tank that damage a bit. And he's got a ring of protection, so that's going to help out somewhat. But the real action is going to happen top. They have this Observer Ward coming through. It actually didn't block this camp. It does sometimes. I think it's just out of range of blocking it. But as it stands right now... Uh, this this is really where the action is going to be. The problem is the Meepo can come online, I think, maybe a bit earlier. He gets so much experience by just going and using his, of course, uh, clones to farm the jungle. He's almost level 3 as it stands, and then he can start really going to work. Maybe go for, I guess, a Vlad's if you want to, but more likely than not, just going to bots, maybe an Aghanim's, a Blink Dagger, or maybe even a Mech if he really wants to, but... I don't know, man. I don't know. This it's really coming down to the aggressive tri lane. The so I mean, I don't know. I, I yeah. just I don't know. I think you don't know, Mott. I don't. So know. it's okay because I don't really know either. And uh, while I really want this uh, 
the story, this perfect fairy tale story of this Meepo coming in and they get to pull out their first win <laughs> in the ADL. I wanted to make it happen. I still can't help but Top 5 has a very, very strong draft on their side. They got a lot of guys who can take a lot of punishment yeah. and keep on going. And even though Meepo, he's ideally looking for those quick little pickoffs and the right opportunities to make jump in, but you got to consider there's a waveform, there's a surge, burrow strike, I mean, Epi, dragon form, Epi. Like, shall, there's just there's so everything. much. The AoE damage was already there with the Sand King, so. He's doing a bit of a ballsy maneuver picking this up, but man, I want it to happen, baby. The Dazzle with the Meepo, though, is actually such a strong combo. The Shadow Wave can keep a lot of your Meepos up and ready to go. You can Shallow Grave the one that gets low, which, I mean, there might be a couple, though, and that's kind of an issue. But they have this defensive strategy as well with the Disruption. I mean, they've got ways to save that hero. They've got ways to keep him alive, or at least one of them. And and then it all comes down to Micro. Like I talked about, Jump Again, that Poof Burst damage is just disgusting. I mean, how much damage you can pump out when it's maxed up. So good for Jungly as well, especially because that Geo Strike eventually. And... This hero can do work. I mean, he certainly can. People kind of think this is like, oh, it's bad. It's not very good. I mean, in a competitive environment, I guess, when you're comparing, you know, top teams versus top teams, it certainly doesn't work out too well because teams kind of can deal with him. But yeah, this is, I mean, top five are no strangers to competitive Dota. They've played some top tier teams and Pat Soul's been around for a while. But this is, this is going to be an interesting matchup as, well, we have our first pause coming out for a Sewers game again. DDX has been disconnected for a while. And by the way, he's going for Quas Exhort, so it's been a night of Quas Exhorts for a lot of teams. Which is, I'm sure, a night you do enjoy, Mod. Oh, You're always a big fan of it. Sunstrikes are glorious. The problem is, though, as a caster, or as a, you know, more as a caster, you love Sunstrikes just like anyone watching the game does, but man, they can be hard to catch sometimes on the goddamn camera, and I'm just so thankful it's you on the camera and not me, Mod. I don't know how, like... I don't know how I'm supposed there's there should be like a button that I click. Is there not like a strike. map indication? Like you can hear there it anymore. Like no. they need they to put be, one in for caster. They need to put one in and goes caster like look here. Yeah, like <laughs> I just a giant coming. like or like on the left side or the right side, you know where those like uh notifications come up, like click here for sunstrike camera or something like that. And I'll just be like, Oh nice, okay, cool. Because like yeah. you can hear where they are and you could try to guess their general oh, yeah. vicinity, but I mean, the Dota map is pretty big to a certain extent, and even if it's in a cornered area, it's still very difficult to find. So I'll do my best, guys, for the camera work that is allotted to give you mm -hmm. the Sunstrike camera. And mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm on point, it's going to you know be what, great. Though? But If they uh, don't like it, Mott, they, we know what they can do. They can take buy. themselves to that ticket store. That's right. Mott, sell $3.99. You can control the camera and completely <laughs> forget about everything we're doing. You can instead just have us whisper in your ear as usual. But then you can actually, at home, take the camera into your own hands and see how fucking hard it is. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Have you? Are you fed up with casters and ca controlling the camera? Are you fed up with the amount of just jittering all over the place? Would I you am. like to see? <laughs> would you like to see different stats in the game? Absolutely. Would you like to look at the graphs? Well, oh. guess what? You can control all of that for three ninety nine in the Dota store for the American Dota League ticket. Go purchase it up. And of course, you could just then call us out a bit later after you've controlled yeah. the camera and hashtag sellouts. Yeah. Well. Yep. Bitter ground TV. Let's go. Exactly. So, Ryu's calling us out right now, but whatever. He doesn't understand the struggles, obviously, not being a camera controller himself. But as it stands right now, we will jump back into the game. And you look at the Dark Seer, the creep cutting, it's alive. He's trying to, I guess, pull the creep camp into the Dark Troll Summoners, which is going to Iron Shell the Dark Troll mm -hmm. Warlord. And, oh, that's, like, new meta. I That's actually really interesting. So not only is the Dark Seer, like, creep cutting, but he's doing a nice job of just getting jungle CS as he's well. He's not being threatened at all. I mean, yeah. how long before Suru's finally go, okay, okay, let's get one down there. I would say that Dazzle should probably abort this top lane and just go help his friend Meepo on the bottom. I mean, well, already Dazzle and Meepo can work so nicely together. You know, he managed to crowd. Look how low this Dark Seer is. And there's like, respect by jungle, but they're just respecting it so much they're not even nearby to even try to contest him. So. One Earthbind into like a right click is enough to kill him. But he salves up now and he actually has his Sol Ring done. So he's already level 3. And. That's really nice. The Meepo level 3 as well. He just got there not too long ago, and, and, and actually that means that he has his clone. But you expect the action to happen top, and, and they're fishing. 999 is just... They're telegraphing these ganks. Anytime you're like on the other side of the range creep, you kind of know what's coming. And, and Pat's all backed off. He actually had waveform ready just to, in case he maybe got caught out of position. And the only thing that'll stop him from moving is actually stomp, but... The microcosm of the game in this top lane is not shaping up to be anything just yet. There's poles coming in from Shanks and whatever. Eventually, maybe you leave Pat Soul alone with Shanks just kind of farming the jungle. Maybe you have the Ancient Apparition. But as it stands right now, they don't seem too concerned. But maybe that changes with Peta. He doesn't have Poison Touch. They'll have to go using the Disruption. 
for the most part, but no ganks coming out just yet. Yeah, I was expecting maybe to see Sand King get a smoke early in this one, but it looks like the overall game plan is they're just going to play it slow unless they see the perfect opportunity to make something happen. If not, they're happy just letting their Morphling farm. They know Darkseer is going to get what he can in the bottom lane with the Iron Shell. You don't even have to contribute too much to get some reliable gold on your side. So I guess they kind of want to just play it slow for now and then maybe decide from there if they want to you know, make an aggressive maneuver towards the mid lane Invoker or not. Yeah, and honestly, they there's a lot of options for both sides here. Fly, he won't be roaming to gank. At least I don't think he will. He can maybe try to get rune control, but the rest of his team should be doing that for him. Sunstrike maybe going in the oh, top beautiful. lane. That's first blood as the disruption came out. I just caught the tail end, and Pat Soul getting blown up. Did he have any strength morph? No, his 15 strength right now. The rest agility going his way, so... That is first blood coming out as I caught the tail end of the Sunstrike, thankfully. Just classic combo, oh. Mott, you know, throw out the Disruption, follow up with the Sunstrike, it makes it for easy, all day pickoffs there, and wow, just like that, Asura's Gaming immediately on the board. Yeah, and they actually tried to make it go on the Centaur, but the Shadow Wave came through, or Shadow, yep, Shadow Wave came through and made sure 999 was finding through up a stomp as well, but that's actually a good start for Asura's, they, they now know that they control this lane, and Shanks has no mana to burrow, there's not really mana to cold feed either, Pat Soul, he's gonna have a rough time all the meanwhile, I mean, this Morphling is getting essentially free farm. Yep, yep, and that's definitely great for him, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he moves into his early buildings of a Lincoln Sphere, just get up that extra survivability for himself, and... You know, Centaur isn't doing too bad himself. He's finding his own CS, but he's sharing a lot of XP with his lane mates here who aren't really contributing too much personally themselves. I mean, they did make the nice pickoff happen earlier, but it's as if they're really just trying to babysit a Centaur and just try to keep the uh, top five team back. And looks like Ancient Apparition looks to go for a little bit of a side pull himself. Has to be careful here. Briefly caught out. No, will step back and just certain lane control actually coming out here from Asuros. Yeah, absolutely. Subarus, they, they want this pull. They want everything to go their way. And nine last hits for Pat Soul. That is not what you want to start off as. And it's not like he's going to have any easier of a time later on down the road. They might leave his lane. They might try to gank. But without him having farm, he can't really contribute. Yes, Waveform is a good fighting ability. But you'd rather have an item, at least treads, and maybe even a Lincoln Sphere by that time. So now that you know they've kind of shut him down they can look to maybe roam and that's exactly what they're doing the hydra's gonna run mid but there is this dire observer ward coming out so fly should see this coming he's getting pinged on right now that ping coming out from the sand king who says i'm just gonna head to the jungle i mean this is the only thing i can do right now so meepo 33 last hits he's level six he's getting towards that uh, next clone which is of course when, when is that skilled up I, I don't know when is that skilled up? I forget. Is it seven ten? My, I don't play Meepo. Are you kidding me? It's like seven ten, I think, or not, or not, not seven. Maybe it's like three, seven ten. Is it seven? I don't know. Raya Boris, Raya Boris, are you there? Do you know? Hello. Huh? Doesn't it say it on the skill? I think. It oh should. my God, Raya Boris. It should, but I don't think. I it, think it's ten. I think uh, it's uh, three doesn't... ten and seventeen. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's that actually sounds right. Yeah, I don't know for whatever reason. I I'm not sure why I said seven, but I think you're right. Uh, coming out so Meepo that means that he'll have that next clone at level 10 and he's not too far away from that It'll take him some time to get there, but he's farming just fine The invoker speaking of which is also sitting at 38 CS So he went for one point in Wex early on just to make sure he survived a gank He's got three points to the extort two point into the quas. He got harassed a bit I think it was by the elder dragon form from fly using his breathe fire So suddenly as service they're looking very good right now I mean, I'd say if they're not winning all of their lanes They're getting very close to winning them the invoker is the only one that's kind of questionable and even that is going his way Even well the towers taking some damage though. Yeah, but he has to be careful here though Sand King lurking from above trying to make something happen in the mid lane We were questioning if they were gonna play it slower go for something. It looks like they do want to go Jumping right in Fort spirit nice block dragon. He can't get through that gets cut out with a cold snap Has to go on the retreat here running right through the woods who trying to hide it out But we'll run to dazzle dazzle. Nope disruption catches him out. This will be it. Can they tame the dragon? Yes, they can Fly ends up flying himself right into a quick feed. Yeah, that was with the haste rune, and he felt maybe a bit more confident with it so that he could just go past the tower, even get DDX, or at least something. But nice rotations from Pita and the Hydra. Soul Catcher and the Shadow Wave just doing work there. They're going to run right into Shanks. Burrow Strike is up on 999. The Cold Feed as well. Shadow Wave keeping him alive. He'll latch up. Waveform, is it going to go? No, they realize they don't have enough damage. That might be suicide. So even when they get somebody picked out of position, 999 still survives. And that just makes it that much harder for top five. Yep. And uh, Wikipedia mid lane. confirmed 3, 10, 17. Thank 3, you. 10, Thank 17. You, Thank you. Right from Dotapedia. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, wow, Sunstrike bottom lane caught the tail end of that. Looks like they got Darks here on the run back, getting too much damage. With the help of the Earthbinds and just a few right clicks was more than enough for this Meepo squad to take over the Darks here. And this is great. Fullback's happy right now. Yeah, level 8 already. Getting up to a Blade of Alacrity, so three components away from the Agdems if he's rushing in. That's a huge item for him. Mm -hmm. DDX continuing to farm away the mid lane, and you talked about the Sunstrike. It came through. I missed it, but beautiful play, I'm sure, coming out from him. He's actually got his Midas already. Eight minutes in, he's doing rather well. He's got brown boots as well. And it just goes to show top five. I mean, they've got really nothing. Fly's the only one getting, I guess, any decent CS on their team. I guess Darks here actually is sitting at 43 right now, but he's gone down, if not twice, I think. Just, nope, just once, actually. But he'll head back bottom, and he's actually okay in that lane. He's going to go for that early mech, and I think this is what saves top five, is that mech early on in the game. Mm -hmm. But can, just echoing off of what you were talking about with the CS, it's just not good. I mean... Pat Soul is a Morphling, 30 now, but look how low he is compared to everyone else. Like, you're hoping to get a little bit more going for yourself in this tri-lane kind of setup, but it just goes to show Surus have been kind of asserting themselves in this bottom lane, contesting the try with their own and not allowing them to get too much easy farm. So, very nice on their part, but they're feeling greedy here in the mid lane. They're going to pop the Dragon Farm and quickly finish off this Tier 1 tower, and it looks like it will be the first Tier 1 tower of this game. And DDX is going to try to deny Radiant's some TP rotations tower. now. They've got to back away, and it looks like actually they, they've zoned them out effectively. The Illusion's not doing enough damage just yet. In fact, now there's going to be the Dragon Tail and the Hydra. He hasn't used it just yet. That disruption, there it goes. Soul Catcher, double edge blinking from 999. Burrow, Shanks is alive, but Fly is not. The corrosive breath from the Illusion's doing work. Shanks, now Stampede, he's going to get caught here. Potentially the Shadow Poison is on missing there. The double edge blink, there oh, it goes. Baby. 999 grabbing another one. Five kills going their way centaur with that early early blink dagger fantastic play coming out and the deny as well fantastic coordination to rotate in and know the right time to try to fight and defend the tower and it wasn't enough dragon i could not get away even with the a little bit of assistance he had it was not enough and that all happened they didn't even use the meepo meepo's been just a dark horse for his, their team just farming up on his own and this is getting out of hand real quick look at how many items he's got close to that agonist scepter at 10 minutes in like I guess that should be the time you're getting when you've got free farm. He's got 78 CS. Now that he's got three Meepos, he can send one into the jungle, poof it up, maybe even send two, have one in lane. But now they're finally looking to gank him. Shanks, there's going to be the smoke of deceit coming out. No Elder Dragon, but will they need it? Iron Shell is up, ready to go if they need it right now. Mech might be there after this kill. Fullback backing away. He's got a Meepo at home. If he can poof away, he will survive. He's going to poof one. Oh. No, he doesn't poof away. Fullback getting brought down. The vacuum securing the kill. He was so close to the Agonims, but no, not really there. So he goes down. He's down for 28 seconds. Not that bad, but still yeah. a nice gank. Just a, just a minor setback, but they want more here. Oh, nice Burrow Strike. They're going to catch on the Hydra now. Eats the Breath of Fire. Run away, my friend, if he can, but he cannot. Falls down right behind the tower. And another nice pickoff going for top five. So we were counting him out a bit right there. Pick up a couple of kills for themselves. And now looking to continue on pushing in. Dragon Form should help pretty significantly here as they try to pelt down this tier one tower and that's that's the mech being completed like i talked about the actually oh the sun strike shakes oh my lord he almost ate that to the face he just dodged it narrowly but uh, he will survive. They'll take another tier one tower. This is the thing. The Darkseer, they really haven't been... He hasn't been in the fights up until this point right now. He's died maybe once, but not an issue. And as it stands, they've actually taken two tier one towers, whereas the rest of theirs are alive except for the mid. So all of a sudden, I, there might actually be a gold lead coming out for top five. No, serious. They still have 3,000 going their way. So I put that thought behind me. And the experience lead, 2,000 for serious as well. However, with that mech like I talked about, maybe they start putting some pressure on and, and give Morphling some room to farm. It's also uh, good to know as I switch over to the net worth that you just ignore the Meeple one as that's always just kind of like a weird little niche. But bottom lane, it looks like they get a quick kick off in the jungle. Darkseer gets out fullback. The Meeple falls once again and yeah. And as much as they kind of dominated the first 10 minutes or so, they need to make sure that that Meepo survives right now. Because, yeah. I mean, he's not going to be the most in terms of late game, but he could certainly carry, obviously. And he's one of those heroes that you'd like to have just absolutely snowball out of control. Whereas Pat Soul, if he continues to get consistent CS in this top lane, well, we'll see. Yeah, he didn't get it before, but he's looking to finally get some of it now, now that he's not going up against such a rough and tough lane, and he can find the right opportunity for now to get that farm in. And Meepo's farm is, you know, what was once very great, 
two quick feet overs, and now he's set back even further from getting that sweet Agnum Scepter. So he's going to have to try to get that going right away before he gets caught out again. And, I mean, top five, they got a little bit of momentum going, going in their favor, and they want more of it. I mean, immediate smoke to fly out here. They're going to look to scavenge and go right through the jungle. No tier one to uh, TP2. Um, no, pull back. Pull back. No, this you're will not be the third safe. straight Get pull. out. Get out. Get out. They know they're missing right now. Fullback's going to back away. and. Oh, no. They haven't spotted him just yet. They haven't spotted the smoke. Fullback's still alive. Uh, he's backing off to the tower now. Luckily enough, he, he nice. actually might survive this. With that game since Tangling, or at least mm -hmm. one of his teammates saying, listen, that might not be safe. Let's go top. Let's kind of babysit you. Let's make sure that you get that farm in this lane. And while that's happening, they finally might get spot out bottom, realizing that that's where those heroes are on the map. It looks like they're going to walk forward just right now. So, okay, he's alive. He's safe. He's behind this tier 2 tower. But uh, still alive, nonetheless. No, good game sense. Hiding back, waiting it out, waiting to see where everyone Smoke will top. show up, and they will be bottom. But top, they know that the majority are bottom. That leaves only possible two at most here in the top. And with the help of their own numbers, they might try to make something happen. But they already have TP'd out and abandoned the lane. So maybe in the meantime, they'll take advantage and go for the tower instead. Full back brings back in the other two Meepos and will begin to try to, you know, set up a little bit of a foundation here, pushing into this tier one tower where the rest of his team. The Asura squad kind of scavenging out the jungle, trying to catch someone out. Ancient Apparition coming in from the north. Bottom, though, a lot of damage on this tier 2 tower, getting very low. That double damage rune on the DK is absolutely doing work. TDX ready to deny, and he's going to try it, but no such luck. And they haven't even picked up that tier 1 top just yet. So that is a big pickup coming out from top 5. They're evening the gold graph now just by getting towers and by getting some pickoffs here. So suddenly they say, let's relax, let's not do anything crazy. We don't know where the rest of the team is for. Uh, Asuras will back off close to the tower, whereas the rest of our squad's pushing in, and if they want to defend, they could try, but, well, Dyer's top well tower actually they get fallen. that tier one tower top as it falls, and Pepita's got a counter ward. Is that the Aghanim Scepter? Yes, it is. Meepo, mm -hmm. the, the third clone coming out, the fourth Meepo total, which means uh, that's kind of gross. Yeah. Yep, but, you know, we'll see if he has enough durability to be able to get something going, you know. If he goes and... Obviously, he'll be able to take any sort of one-on-one -on -one matchup, but we'll see. Top 5 might be able to bring on a little bit of that buddy-buddy system and not get caught out too easily. You know, a bit of it up here at the top lane. As you can see, Patzel leading the front, but he is back up nearby in case things get a bit hairy. And 999 sitting pretty confident right here. Does have the global available. Blink Dagger also in the pocket in case he wants to make a jump in. But, nope, they're going to respectfully back up for now. That's a smart play. They didn't actually have vision. Uh, Asurus didn't have vision at the top lane. They didn't know where everyone was, so they just say, listen, we, we don't know what's going on. Some heroes are off the map, and, and actually all five were top and, and still Radiance are for top five. Uh, yeah, I get it, top five, all are top. Uh, they smoke up right now, respect my authority. Fly, got to look for a drag until he finds it. 999, Stampede's available. He's got to pop it, and he's got to make his way out of there. No follow-up damage, so I, I guess an ultimate for an ultimate coming out and uh, no harm done, but now it looks like the tier one top might take a fall. Yep, fullback already pieced out, went to the mid lane where he'll find a little bit of farm for himself, making a bit of a rotation possibly through the enemy jungle. Nope, he'll just content sitting here. I don't know if he'll make the rotation all the way up, as he probably can't, but they're going to look to move in. Dragon form already popped right here. The right clicks to fly, slowly withering it down with that tremendous amount of sweet range, and Centaur's going to bully up the front lines here, and we'll see if they manage to catch anyone out. Is They also have to be cautious. Darkseer now with a full level 4 vacuum. He can get a bit of a combo going for himself. Yeah, they will smoke up for Asurus right now. Blink Tacker's done for the Invoker as well. Meepo's not there, so if they take a 5 on 4 engagement, it might not be profitable for Asurus. However, it looks like top 5 don't even want to just kind of have that thought enter their mind as they back off. They're, they're even, like, really far behind this 2-2. Two -two. They'll smoke up themselves, and they might meet right in the center, right in the middle of things, in that mid lane, next to that tier 2 tower. We'll see what line is drawn coming out for top 5 as they're maybe heading through the secret or side shop here, and we'll see. Yep. There we go. If you feel like your back's just a little against the wall, you want to get something going, you're going to pop that smoke right there and see if you can catch anyone out. And You know, Asurus Gaming, they're no uh, stranger to that buddy-buddy system themselves. Holding strong here, bottom lane, in a tight-knit group 
They begin to scout out from the side. Oh, if they get in from a flank, uh oh, coming in from behind. Burrow strike on two. Very nice. Nihau to the wall vacuum, oh, and they man. clean up those supports way too quickly. Invoker wants to show himself, but they might feed this one all away. Nine and nine does end up quickly falling. They manage to get a quick pickoff on the Sand King, but is it enough to get away on top? It does not look like it. Meepo is not going to even bother getting involved in this one, and top five are happy to take that. Yeah, that is an excellent trade coming out for them. Big burrow into a big vacuum, and the wall used up as well. But no epicenter, actually. The uh, Sand King just skilling it up now as he hits level A. He wanted to be full burrow strike before that, and a couple levels into the Sandstorm as well. He's actually not at his Blink Dagger. He wants to get 1600 and get to that Blink Dagger a bit later with that Arcane's up and ready to go. But like you mentioned, they blew up those supports. So now the supports, and, and a lot of the problem is they're very squishy. Now Hydra and Pepita, they, they really haven't accomplished a lot other than getting, you know, pretty much Pat Soul shut down in that top lane. Their net worth the lowest. You look at the Arcanes up in the Sand King, he's got some more farm as well. Even the AA has a point booster. So top five have positioned themselves well here to the late game. There's still a 2,000 gold lead for Asuris. The experience lead is the same, but that can continue to drop as the game moves forward. Yep, I mean, it's... I, I feel like I say this all the time, but in this particular case, especially on the side of top five, execution is going to be pretty crucial for them. Uh-oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. I hear a sun strike. I can't figure out where it is. Please, Valve, give me some sort of indicator. I'm frantically checking around the map. I have no idea where it could have gone. God damn it. Well, well, it's missed now. It's gone. It's uh, off the map forever, if you will, until the next sun strike, obviously. But... Well, this poor invoker is about to get dragon tailed and burrowed and what have you. Even ice blast coming through the breathe fire. That is one dead invoker. Fullback wants uh -oh. to fight. The poof is gonna go fly. Gonna take oh. a lot of that damage. Look at that just beautiful burst. Now Hydra. Now Soul Catcher up in the SK. Big turn. Two for one. Demonic purge. They're not done yet. TP stop. Nicely played. Nine nine nine. Earth finds up and again he is done. So he'll be down. Three dead now. Fullback cleaning house, and that's what I'm talking about with that poof burst damage. Radiance it's time, baby. Is Fullback is getting ready to feel it. He's going to get the momentum going, fearing confidence, strutting his stuff, going right for the Roshan. Immediately getting into a bit of a tussle with him. Eats a bit of a stun, steps back, so I don't know if this is a potential plan he's going for, but he actually picks up the Ghost Scepter. Shotgun? Uh, I mean, this is a bit... I'm already pretty unfamiliar with Meepo there, Mott, but uh, Ghost Scepter seems pretty intriguing. Well, I mean, it builds into the Ethereal Blade like I talked about. Shotgun might be an ice, a nice item, I think, just because, I mean... Well, it gives you the agility, which gives you stats as well, which is nice, but... The only other reason to build a Ghost Scepter would be to deal with the right click damage, of which top five have very little other than the DK and Pat Soul, obviously, but Pat Soul's not very farmed, so it, it more than likely is a shotgun, which means that if he poofs onto somebody, even with like just one or two clones, they'll die. It's just that it's going to be that fast. So he's looking for a single target burst damage coming through. And in a game with a Morphling, who honestly is one of the only heroes known to build shotguns, Fullback says, screw you. Watch what's going to happen. I, 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 It's got to be a shotgun, I feel like. I don't know. Maybe a Ghost Scepter, but still. I know something. What do you know? Oh, something? what do you know, Ooh, right, Boris? What do you not, know? Not, I'm saying, like, if you if you go the Ghost Scepter on the enemy, you can get out of nets. So, I don't know. He, he won't be able to net anybody, but obviously it increases your damage of poof once you first blink on them, and they'll probably instantly die. But yeah, it's not that great. Probably would have been better just to go for a heart. Yeah, well, I, I think... It's an it's a cool pickup. It's a fun pickup, and no, you're right though. I think the uh, really it's I just think for that burst damage. But oh, he doesn't even have a blink. No, not yet. No, he actually, I I swear he's saving for something. It's 2,700 gold that he's got in the bank right now, so he's saving. For Don't something. sometimes Meepo go for Vlad's as well, or am I crazy in thinking? They that? do, but it's kind of eh, not so much anymore. It used to kind of be like Mech and Vlad's were kind of the two items you might pick up on a Meepo, but it's mostly just Vlad's I, or not Vlad's. Excuse me. It's like it, it usually is Boots of Speed, Ags, maybe Bots eventually, Blink Dagger, kind of Rush. Yeah. The, those are the core items that you pick up on the Meepo nowadays, at least for the most part. But there's only so many times we even get to watch a Meepo and maybe just each player has their own style or what have you. So we'll see what Fullback likes to do. And for now, it's get a hold of a Ghost Scepter. So he'll mosey himself up to the top lane, look for a little bit of extra farm for himself. And we'll just have to see what the game plan is now for top five as they had fallen a bit in that last uh, team fight tussle. Yeah, I mean, they had something good going their way. I mean, I talked about the 2,000 gold lead that was for Asuris. Now it's back up to 3,000, which is, at 22 minutes in, nothing. I mean, that's that's one good fight, and, and Morphling's back up in it. And speaking of Morphling, he finally completes up that Lincoln Sphere. A bit late, but 
it's still not bad. I mean, he just needs a damaging item. He might even go for the shotgun himself just to pick off one of those Meepos or some of the squishier supports like that Dazzle or like the Shadow Demon. Uh, could go for a Manta eventually, even first, really. Butterfly at some point, and Scotty at some point. I don't expect those to be his items next. Maybe a BKB if he wants to be ultra defensive in this game against a Centaur, but I don't see that happening. The smoke is now up for Asuru's Gaming. They're looking to shut somebody down in the jungle, but guess what? Nobody is home, my friends. Nope, There's nobody nobody's here. home. They're even passing up a DD rune. They don't even want to care about that right now. They're just going to not even risk being spotted out by any potential ward and just kind of tussle on through and head towards the mid lane where they are going to find someone. And we got a Sand King with a Blink Dagger here. He's itching to do a big epi here, and we'll see if he goes for it. Jumping in first will be the Darks here, it looks like. There it goes. No, sorry, that was, yeah, DK. Couldn't tell him the Ion Shell, but they quickly take apart Centaur. Wow, very nice. Yeah, that Ion Shell blur my vision a bit but yeah i could I, but yeah <laughs> yeah i was like flothar is on a dark scene i was like oh it's dk okay that makes sense but uh yeah no that's that's there was no one home in the jungle but they just wrap mid and you know that centaur just overextends himself just a little bit and all of a sudden he gets caught and dies almost instantaneously probably painless as well so fullback actually just goes for a ghost scepter and then a reaver so not a shotgun i really don't know um i guess that the ghost scepter's it's going to be nice, I guess, a little bit later on in the game as well, but... I guess this will work nice in case, you know, one of his Meepos do get locked down from all the extra disabled. They'll be able to withstand the first heavy wave of punishment and maybe be able to poof themselves out of there from, you know, any sort of sticky situation. But, you know, for now, though, he's kind of split between two different items to complete. We'll see if he finishes out the Reaver and moves on from there. And But regardless, though, inheriting lots of farm. It's hard to judge based on the net worth chart because the Meepo one always seems to be kind of a bit buggy, but... uh you know, he's pretty much up there. Probably well above even the Evoker. 180 last hits total. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice to have. I mean, but that's going to be a Meepo regardless of, of the situation, unless you're just getting shut down, which he did get shut down a bit down bottom at least once or twice, but he kind of found his way back into it. And uh, I thought maybe there was going to be another smoke from top five as they were congregating together, but no, they're just kind of sitting and farming together. They don't want to get caught out again, but that might... It doesn't matter because there's a smoke of deceit gank coming uh -oh. through. Pat Soul has the Lincoln Sphere. Stomp is going to be up. And they're going to break that Lincoln's in a second. Double Edge is going to go. Deafening Blast. Big fight. Walls up. Vacuum not doing enough. Waveform through. Pat Soul flying, but here comes the Meepo. Full back. Pouncing on Fly. There's the poofs up. Fly in trouble. Will fall to the Meepo. Now they've got to back away. Epicenter doing some work. The Sun Strike as well, but that's off the point. Shanks now getting caught out. Blown up. Double for the Meepo. Now uh -oh. they also lose the AA to the right clicks of the Invoker. I think Cold Snap was used there. They're walking. Into the wall, they'll be careful, they'll back off now. But three dead immediately for top five, and in a very profitable smoke gank. That went very, very nicely for Asuras. They could not have asked for more. Got a nice proper start, good start initiation, good, you know, placed weave. And even uh, Shadow Demon was very patient before even cautiously throwing out any sort of disruption or making anything happen. Um, Morphling did end up getting away, but doesn't matter. Now they're going to inherit a tier two as well. Looks very good for them so far. Yeah, and uh, as the game goes on, the Morphling is just, he's losing less and less space to just work with here. Luckily, the jungle's not warded up, and they still have that tier two tower top, so he can kind of stay there safely because he's got Replicate, because he's got Waveform and Strength Morph, but he's got to be careful. I mean, he's getting towards that shotgun, but it's going to be ways away, and all the while, that means that Roshan goes down, fullback gets an Aegis, which that's scary to deal with. And the Invoker does have an Agnums as well. So with Surus, with that last fight, I'm sure they inherited about 2k, if not more gold. And yeah, they'll jump up to 5, even almost 6k right now with their lead. Yep, and it's all going to come down to whether or not Top 5 can be able to get a game plan going for themselves. I mean, do you bother trying to contend against the Meepo down the road with your Patsol Morphling or not? I mean, that's a matchup that I would have to wager would be pretty risky for Patsol. If they can make the team coordination work out for the better and really try to take one particular one down... I don't know. It's going to be a bit finicky. A nice place Epicenter would definitely help as well, though. I think Meepo getting shotgun might be the death of him, but he does have the Reaver, so maybe not. I mean, just, I mean, because the clones, they do lose a bit of the HP, I think, as they go through. Actually, I mean, well, I mean, the, obviously the one that has the Reaver on him and the Aghanim Scepter gets a bit more health, but the rest of them are still pretty inherently tanky, so. Now, also, they have a pipe, too. And yep, there it is. Fullback picks up the shotgun. He, he went for the Reaver first, he gets the shotgun next, and now. Any hero that's really caught out means he's probably going to die. I wish there was a Blink Dagger up for this Meepo, but he's not. I guess he could chase him down because of the Ghost Scepter slow or the Ethereal Blade slow. Yeah, and I guess, you know, they have a little extra Radiant's pickup potential with the help with Disruption to try to set something up for themselves. Plus, you got to consider that sweet Dazzle Bomb with the heal. They've had a 
so much little niche synergies working out. It's been going really nice for him in a lot of these team fights, and we'll see if they can keep the pace here. Momentum on the bottom. Tier 1 still stands down there, so that'd be nice to have. Yeah, that's actually surprising that it's still alive. They've they've done a nice job of controlling the game. And early on, top five got a lot of towers, but now they've obviously just been kind of stuck on their side of the river. So it's it's Cirrus's time here to look for more towers and even look for more fights. But they have everything going their way. Fullback can push out lanes with his Meepos, especially if he buys bots or even a Blink Dagger. One of those two items has to come next, I think. Dyer's you can finish up a heart if you really want attack. to, but the Reaver is good enough, I think, in its own right. So... Now, the Tier 1 Tower, like you talked about, might take a fall in the rest of uh, Top 5. They don't seem to be making any rotations yet, so they just want to keep farming here. They want to make sure Pat still has his next item, which Dyer's is still pretty far away. I'm nope, just going to sack the tower. Look at these <laughs> earth binds, the fly outs, even catching one of the sidelines. But, you know, you know what? We're just going to keep the party going. So, Ice Blast to fly out will land on the majority of the Meepos as they continue to right click down. Man, this tower went down very quick. Immediately taken down. That's two Dyer's quick towers now going tower for a sewers game. Fallen. Looking at the gold graph, you can see it right there, man. Moving up near 8K now for them. So it's looking pretty sweet. Meepo Gaming looking pretty nice right now. And it's kind of strange. I mean, top five, you expected that to come in here and just have a great game up against the Sewers who are down 0-2 right now in the ADL. But they're looking for their first victory. They're going to pipe up. They have the Aegis. Might go for this tier three. And even the racks now, there's the replicates Dyer's up. They might try to bait with it, but the DK is in dragon form, so they know that's not the real one. They'll just try to bring it down very quickly. Otherwise, focus on that tier three tower. Patso was pushing out top. He's going to make his way back just a second from now. He's got Replicate up in three seconds. There goes the tier three. The Ice Blast flying through, missing up. Shanks not burrowing in just yet. Taking some damage. Not using the Epi. Sandstorm's going to fly. The Vacuum might go. The Wall is up, doing some damage. There's the Mech. Everyone's still alive except for that SK. Disruption flying through. Now the Invoker damage. The Meatball, the Deafening, doing work. Shanks buys back. Another one dead. That's Fly. Respect my authority. There's the Earth Vine. I haven't seen the Ghost Blade or the Ethereal Blade come out just yet. Shanks getting blown. Oh, no. Look at the damage. Papita, nice grave, whatever. Getting caught out. There's the shotgun, I think, blowing him up. 999 with the double kill, the stomp, and the double edge. Everybody has to buy back right now coming out for top five. Ghost Scepter, Ethereal Blade, now off CD. They actually dove so far that they didn't take a Rax yet. Here comes the Ice Blast coming through. They'll poof everybody back, but not before he gets set up with the debuff. Not that it matters. They've taken their objective. And they'll all wow. back off alive. They don't even lose anyone in that whole tiff, but they might lose someone now. Jump in his return. Pass soul trying to make something happen, but the poof damage is doing a bit too much. He has to retreat back, but now they have their eyes on uh, respect my authority, who ends up then falling. Go Scepter. Oh. Nope. Will not go on it. Instead, steps back, collects himself, and will make a go on the tier three instead. He has been pushing like a machine. Those shovels doing serious work right now. Now putting his attention on the racks. Very easy as Shadow Bladed Dragonite lingers nearby, but the jump in coming out from Centaur. Quick stun, falls up with a double edge, and now they're turning back. Shanks might fall. They end up losing a couple in the end because Pat Soul jumps back as the Morphling and rips him down with the help of the waveform. And now they're going to try oh to take down Malipo, but man, fullback with all that delicious HP, all the delicious taking in this, just soaking uh -oh. it all up. Pat Soul's going to get caught out. Lincoln's is popped, trying to live, morphing everything he can. Shotgun to fly out. There's the bind. One more poof, and they got it. Fullback, double kill for himself, and now they clean out the final set of racks in the mid lane. As much as I love fullback's play this game, and as much as I love the fact that they've pretty much won right now, this shotgun pickup, I feel like, didn't really do anything. Uh, he used it a couple oh, yeah. times there, but it didn't really do much, so they're not done yet. They're going to try to fight vacuum walls, going to go disruption. Burrow, Epi, on cooldown. Now the wow. poop. Oh, blows him up. Double kill coming out as the wave does all the work for the Dazzle. Papita, he gets those kills, whatever. Now getting, of course, slowed down. Shotgun to death. GG finally called as the team wipe goes the way. Well, top five. That means Asuras. They finally get their first win here in the ADL. Nobody winless as we move on to week two. And finally, the last game of the evening coming up. But wow, this story. Fullback with that Meepo blowing people up. Coddle guy, what a series. What a game thus far. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't get anything else going for him in the Artinian squad. They uh, felt that it was about time they pull out the fullback Meepo, and it works in their favor. Now the question begs as we move on to game number two respect ban? <laughs> For the Meepo? We'll see. Uh, I don't know. I feel like you've got to find a way to deal with it. That game, 706 GPM for fullback right now as well. They'll disconnect. We'll jump into the next game real quick. I do want to shout out to Steel Series, our sponsors, obviously. Make sure you follow American Dota League here on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash American Dota League, twitter.com slash American Dota. Buy the ticket, $3.99. But we are going to jump into the next game, guys. Stick around.